What is up guys? I got a mission today. So basically I am going to be trying to prove that Cable, Nathan Summers is the strongest hero in Marvel Champions. And I never ever see anyone talk about this, uh, but Cable, I mean, I think he's all of that. And I think that he is the strongest solo hero in the entire game. So in order to do that, we're going to be taking on Ronan the Accuser on Expert Mill, which is in my opinion, the most difficult villain for true solo. And uh, to even ramp up the, the difficulty even more, we will be uh, facing him with Standard 2 Expert 2. And this is my first true solo game with Standard 2 Expert 2. I have played this in multiplayer before, but this is my first actual time doing it uh, in true solo. So basically with that, uh, we have all the mods that shuffle into the encounter deck, but we have this environment in play here, form of foe. This is the Expert mode side, this is the uh, Standard mode side. So we are doing Expert 2. So it comes in here and says each enemy gains steady, including all the minions, uh, and has an acceleration here as well. Let's go ahead and put the acceleration token on the main scheme so I don't forget that. And then we're just going to put this behind the Kree command ship to kind of save some space. All right. And then let's see, to ramp up the difficulty even more, we're going to give Ronan the Infinity Gauntlet here. So we have all the Infinity Stones, which I'm going to shuffle up right here. And basically the way that the Infinity Gauntlet works is that after the attached building activates, we resolve the special ability of each Infinity Stone in play. Otherwise, put the top card of the Infinity Stone deck uh, into play. Okay, so we have all the stones shuffled up right here. And then I think uh, that's good. Okay, so let's go ahead and get Ronin set up here. So the main scheme setup says to give Ronin the universal weapon. So he has stalwart, plus one scheme, plus one attack. The Kree command ship is a permanent environment that comes to play here with a permanent hazard icon. And we have the power stone, plus one Thor, plus one attack, and also control of the Milano, which we can exhaust to generate a wild resource. And then uh, Ronin's weapon viewed is to search the encounter and discard off for the cut the power sizing right here and put it into play. Coming in with three times player threat and a crisis icon, so we cannot remove threat from the main scheme here unless we get rid of this first. The main scheme starts off with two threat, and then Ronin comes in with toughness as well. And then he's also going to have the Infinity Gauntlet with another plus one scheme, plus one attack with the universal weapon. So he has a space scheme of four now and five attack. And he also has a steady because of the form of foe. Okay, I think that's it with that. Let's shuffle up the encounter deck. All right, and then one big, huge boost to Cable, in my opinion, are these two new player side schemes here. This one came out in the Iceman Hero Pack, and this came out in the Jubilee Hero Pack. But what we can do with these side schemes is whenever we defeat it, we can search our uh, deck. This one for an attack event, this one for an identity specific event. But basically what we're looking for is Cable's big attack event with either of these cards, and that'll give Cable so much tempo uh, for the late game. And I will be using my I Love Spider-Man Justice Cable deck a lot of you guys have asked me what I think the strongest deck that I've ever built is. And I always say every single time, this is that deck. So let's shuffle these cards in here. All right. I think we got everything set up. So with our starting hand, we're looking for one of the four cards, either the Grey Malkin or build support to Grey, Grey Malkin. Call for backup to get Nick Fury or Nick Fury himself. Uh, so let's draw up to our starting hand size here of six. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, well, we got the Nick Fury. We got a call for backup here as well, which means that we can actually, if we want to, um, try to get Nick again for next turn. I like the Professor here, but I might have to get rid of it. I don't know how many times we can spend an Ultra Eagle. Uh, we can definitely mulligan discard these three cards here. Or do I want to just save them to use as a resource for Nick? Because if I draw more valuable cards, it's not going to be good. That's fine. Let's go ahead. Oh, I don't want to draw into the build support, though. Because I want to put it in with uh, Soldier X. You know what? There's no we draw into build support, right? Let's go ahead and mulligan this card, these three cards. And then draw three more back up to our starting hand of six. Okay. Whew. Okay, we did not get the build support. So after we do the mulligan, we're going to use our Soldier X ability. Set up, search your deck, and this cup for a player's size game put into play. We're going to look through here for our build support in our deck and put it straight into play. And then let's shuffle up. So build support is a player size team with three times player threat. When a feeder, we can search our deck in this cup for support with a cost three or less and put it into play. Okay, so we have the build support here with three threat. All right, let's see. Do we have anything to do in auction? Do I play the professor here? Uh, I'm not sure. Let's see, if I play the Professor right now, 
and I play the skilled investigator, if Cable thwarts that out, I can draw back how many cards? Uh, I need to play Nick Fury for sure, right? So we do this, this. The first can fetch us a side scheme. Okay, I think that's fine. I think we have enough resources. So let's go ahead and uh, use a resource right here so I can play the Professor. Professor says, as an alter you action, we can exhaust it. Choose either draw a card or search your deck and discard box for a side scheme at your hand. Let's just get the side scheme that we just discarded back to our hand here. And we really just want that as a resource and we want the Professor in play. Then we're going to play our skilled investigator here. So it's a zero cost upgrade. As a hero response after side scheme is defeated, we can exhaust the skilled investigator and we can draw a card. Let's flip over now to hero form. And then we have plus one Thor, plus one attack here with a power stone. So let's go ahead and Thor for three and clear off the build support. Build support has a one defeat effect. Each player may search their deck and discard off for support with a cost three or less put into play. So we're going to look through here for our gray Malkin, which is a two cost cable identity specific support. And we put that in, straight into play. And let's shuffle up our deck. And then the gray Malkin says, uh, after a size is defeated, we can ready it, and we can also exhaust the Grey Malkin to generate an energy resource. That would defeat the build support. It's going to go into the victory display. I just put that uh, aside here for some space. And then when a side scheme is defeated, because we're in hero form, we can also exhaust the skill investigator so we can draw a card. Cable also has an effect as a response after he defeats the side scheme, which he just did, he can ready up once per phase. So he's going to be ready here. And then I think we just play Nick. Let's exhaust the... Ooh... The cable can still clear that off. Yeah, let's exhaust the Grey Malkin to generate one resource. This would be three more resources per total, four, so we can play Nick Fury. When Nick Fury enters play, choose one, we're going to pick the one and draw three cards. So one, two, three. Ooh, I could actually play Spider Man Peter Parker here. Um, but I really want that call for backup out. Hmm. If I play Spider-Man, oh, I could actually play him. No, oh, man, I'm trying to decide what we should do here. No, I think I, I just keep with Cable here. Um, we can ready up our Great Malkin. Then we have one, two, three, four, five resources to play Spider-Man Peter Parker. Yeah, that's not the play here. Maybe I hold this in my hand for next turn. I get the coffer back up out. Um, okay, Cable is going to go ahead and thwart for three from Cut the Power, I think. Wait, wait, actually, wait, wait, wait. Do we just get another ally, actually, with the chance encounter? I think I want Blindfold here because she'll be enough resource. Okay, we're going to attach the chance encounter to Cut the Power. So we can attach it to a side scheme. When the side scheme is defeated, we can trigger this and search our deck and discover for an ally and add to her hand. We already have Nick here, so I don't need him anymore. We can get Blindfold. Cable's going to Thor for three with the Power Stone. Clear off to cut the Power Side Scheme here. Okay, so we triggered this first because it's Interrupt. So now we search our deck and discard off for an ally adds to her hand. Let's look through our deck here for Blindfold. We're going to add her to our hand, and let's shuffle up our deck here. Yeah, Knowledge is Power. And then Cable cannot ready again after he, he defeats the Side Scheme because we did that once per phase. The side scheme is defeated, but Grey Malkin has effect. When our side scheme is defeated, it, we can ready it back up. Then, I think what we do here is uh, we still have the Milano as an extra resource. We have too much resources right now. If I play Flying for 1, 2, 3, I'll have to waste a double for the call for backup. Uh, I can just use Milano's first play interrupt, I think. Okay, so let's go ahead and use Three resources right here. Yeah, so I can play Blindfold. Blindfold has a response. After she enters play, look at the top five cards of the encounter deck. Discard one and put the rest back in the same order. So we're going to look through here. Uh, top five cards. Okay. So this is really unfortunate because both of the boost icons for these two cards are both overkills. So if we get rid of one, uh, it's still going to have overkill which is pretty bad. Um, let me see, if I, this card, that means I can't block this next attack because we're going to get two boost cards because we have the Power Stone with his Force Interrupt. So if we know that he's going to be hitting with, let's say this and this, 
it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 damage on Cable. Uh, we, I think we just still have Nick block it. He can block 2 of it, so we just take 5. Cable's so tanky, I think that's fine with the overkill. What we could do is discard this. Get, no, there's no other way. There's no way to avoid the overkill, which is really unfortunate. Um, so let's get rid of... Let's get rid of this, so at least the damage is lower. So we know these are going to be the next two boost cards. And then we know that we'll get a whole breach, which is... Oh, wait, wait, no, no, that's, that's not good. We want this, because if I get quick creep private as an, as an encounter card, whole breach as an encounter card, that's better. So let's discard the dark dealings here, I think, is going to be the better play. Because we can just exhaust them a lot. We'll be taking a lot of damage, though, but I think that's fine. So let's discard dark dealings. We're going to put these five, uh, four cards back on top in the same order. Okay, then we're going to exhaust the Grey Malkin to generate a resource to play call for backup, which is a player side scheme coming with three times player threat. We're going to use this first player action on the main scheme, exhaust the Milano to remove three there from the scheme, so we're going to clear it off. Nick Fury will swing for two at Ronin to knock off his tough stats card, and then Nick will take a consequential damage. And then I'm blindfold, might as well Thor for two from here, right? Um. Cable can just throw it out for three, though. That's fine. Blindfold with Thor for two from Copper Backup. Drop it down to one. She'll take a consequence of damage. And that's going to end our turn. It's ready up. We're looking really built out here. I mean, that's just how good Cable is. We're going to draw back up to our hands as a five in our hero form. Okay, I got a Quake, which is pretty nice to see. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, precognition. All right. We're going to get... Call for backup and lock and load here. All right, so it is a Ronin's turn. He's going to add three to the main scheme because of the acceleration. He's going to attack us. He has a force interrupt. Since we have the power stone, he gets an additional boost card, so he has a two. Two boost cards here. We're still just going to have Nick Fear defend this attack, even though we know it has overkill. Because it's going to be, what, one, two, three, four, five. And yeah, Nick will soak two of it. That's fine. So it's going to be overkill and piercing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight damage. Nick will soak two of it. Six will bleed over to Cable, so that'll bring us from 12 down to six. Half of our life. All right, Nick Fury is defeated, and then with the uh, effect of the Power Stone, it says whenever a hero or villain do three more damage to attach character with a single attack, attach the Power Stone to that attacking character. So Ronan now has a Power Stone here as well. Then the uh, Infinity Gauntlet will activate after Ronan attacks. After the villain activates, we... Uh, Resolve all the uh, stones, but there are no stones in place, so we just flip the top card of the stone deck, which is a power stone. So this is now in play for next time he activates. Then uh, we get dealt two face on cards with the hazard icon from the Kree command ship. So we got one, two. Okay, and then we review all the encounter cards. So first one we already know is a Kree private with quick strike, so he's gonna hit us for one. That brings from six down to five. And then we also got hold breach. Choose one, we're gonna pick the one to exhaust Milano. And that will fulfill the requirements of the whole breach. All right, and it's back to our turn. All right. So let's see here. I think I want to play Quake. Uh, oh, Temporal Leap could actually be good. I don't think I need that Tenet Connect Force you right now because let's check our discard power real quick. Do I have Superpower Training in here? With Specialized Trains in here. Is that... Okay, I don't... I think I actually wanted this side scan. I think I messed up uh, putting this deck in. Okay, that's okay. Um, so we for sure think we want to get Quake. Okay, let's go ahead and exhaust the Gray Malkin to generate one resource. This will be a second resource here, so I can play Quake. We are going to have Quake Thor for one. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Cable gets a ready. So should I just have him thwart it? Uh, maybe I should have played the Telekinetic Force with instead then. Yeah, okay, never mind. Cable is going to go ahead. Do I have another sense? No, no, sorry. I remember now because we're going to play lock and load. Okay, Quake's going to Thor for one. Clear off the call for backup here. Okay, so a couple things will happen. Uh, first, we do the one defeat effect of this. So this goes into victory display. We can search our deck and discard pile for an ally as your hand. So now we have two cards in the victory display. And we're going to get Nick Fear from the discard pile. Oh, sorry, not to your hand. We put him into play with Copper Backup. So Nick Fury will enter play. When he enters play, choose one. We'll pick the one to draw three cards. So one, two, three. Oh, I could hard play the uh, Plaza Rifle here. Hmm. 
Uh, and then quick will take consequential damage, I forgot. And we also exhaust the skill investigator because the side skin is defeated, so we can draw a card. Okay, that's a dead card. So if I play the temporal leap, play the plasma rifle, I and mean, what's the point of the lock and load here? It doesn't really do anything. Um, we could have Blindfold take herself out, so I can play Quake. Uh, cut, or Kesar, I mean. That's the guy that we have. Oh, and then when it's asking speed, I forgot we also can ready up the Grey Malkin. Yeah, we have too many resources, and I don't know what to do with all of them. Okay, let's have... Hmm. Okay, for sure I want to play this. I want to play the Temporal Leap which is a huge boost for us. I want to play the lock and load. And then can I also play Kesar like that? I think I can. Okay, let's, um, we're going to use a resource right here, the plasma rifle, so I can play lock and load. Now there are players sightseeing coming in with two times player threat. Okay, then we're going to... Use the Gray Malkin, right? Yeah, Gray Malkin to generate a resource. This will be a second resource, so I can play Temporal Leap. It's a two-cost upgrade. As I hear interrupt when the main scheme will be completed, we can remove this card from the game and put a side scheme from the victory display back into play and move forward there from the main scheme to that side scheme. So that'll give us uh, some breathing room for the main schemes there. Then we're going to have Cable Thwart for two and clear out the lock and load here. So if this side scheme is defeated, it's going to go into the victory display, and we can search our deck and discard pile for a weapon upgrade to cost three or less and put it into play. So our discard pile here, we just discarded our plasma rifle, which now comes into play. And then when a side scheme is defeated, we can ready up the gray, uh, gray Malkin. Cable's effect, whenever he defeats the side scheme, he can ready up once per phase, and he just defeated that side scheme, so he is ready back up here. And then I think I have Blindful Thor the main. She gets knocked out. I play K Oh, wait, no. We're short of resource here because I want a plasma rifle. I forgot that. Hmm, I forgot that Plasma Rifle requires us to spend one resource to trigger. If I play Kesar here, then I can't Plasma Rifle. I think that's fine. Uh, we're going to get stunned next turn. I want to play the Precognition, I think, for sure. So do we have the damage to take out the Precognition? Yeah, we still can take him out. Okay, let's have Blindfold Thor for two from the main scheme. Drop down a one threat. Should we take a consequential damage? Get knocked out. And the question is, do I just leave the Kree private here? We may have to gun out damage really quickly right now because I think we almost have to rush Ronin down with this Justice deck and just get set up super duper quick and then go for the kill. Um, yeah, I think we got to lay on some damage right now. So let's go ahead and exhaust the Grey Malkin to generate resources. This would be a double so I can play Kesar. When Kesar enters play, remove one third from each scheme in play, so we can clear off the main scheme here. Okay, so I was trying to decide this. Do I take out Ronin or the Kree Private here? We have six damage between uh, our three characters. The Kree Private only hit us for one, but we're pretty low right now because of that nasty overkill attack. Let's go ahead and play the Precognition here. As a hero action, look at the top X cards in the counter deck, where X equals the number of side schemes in a victory display. So we have three side schemes here, so we look at the top three cards. Oh, it's going to be overkill. Oh, what is going on? We are getting... Okay, we can discard one, put the rest back in any order. So we're going to get overkilled here again uh, because we're getting two Kree privates. Um, oh, no. Well, if we discard one... Oh, we can put the rest back in any order. Okay, never mind, never mind. So we can change the order now with the precognition. Okay, that helps out. So Rogue Vessel here. It says you may discard one. We're not going to discard any of them. We get the Rogue Vessel as a, as a boost. Two Kree privates. We just take out all the overkills here. So we're going to be taking a lot, a lot of damage. I might want to flip down. Rolling schemes for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I could always temporal leap it, though. Um, do I flip down to get a recovery off? Oh, if I did that, I should have uh, used the plasma rifle as well. Okay, we're going to put these three cards back on top in the same order. But now all the overkill is going to be a lot, or uh, in a different order, in the order that we just uh, decided there. Okay, that will resolve our precognition. Uh, do I temporal leap his massive scheme here? 
Wait, he seems for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I take that off, it's going to be three. So two plus three is going to be no, two plus three. Oh, it's going to be six. It's going to pop either way whenever he schemes. So we let him just pop the main scheme here. I think, and we flip down. Yeah, I think that's the play. Uh, we can also get a side scheme out. So let's go ahead and flip down to Alfred Eagle. Right? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Nick can block an attack. Then we get two more Cree privates. Ah, that kind of hurts. Because uh, they're going to quick strike us. That's so I want to avoid that quick strike damage. I think that's fine. I think we just let the main scheme pop, honestly. Um, hmm. We need to lay on damage. Let's see. What do we have here? We have keep up the pressure, generation X. So what sizing would I get? I'll probably get maybe generation X there. We could also get our tough one. Okay, you know what? I can always flip next turn. I think we don't flip yet. All right, all right, all right. So here's the play. We're going to have Kesar, Cable, and Nick Fury all attack Ronin here for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 damage. That will bring him from 18 down to 12. And then both the allies will take some consequential damage. Okay, that's going to end our turn. Let's ready back up here. Okay, this is going to hurt a little bit. And then we're going to draw back up to our hand size here of 5. We got Teleconnect Blast and Establish Perimeter. Okay. All right, so it is Ronin's turn. He's going to add 3 to the main. The acceleration is what will cause it to flip if we uh, use our Temporal Leap, unfortunately. Uh, okay, we added it to the main. Ronin's going to attack us. We're going to have Nick Fury block. He gets one boost card now because he has the Power Stone. So this and we didn't take it because we only did two damage. Um, okay, so he's gonna do uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight damage. Knocks out Nick Fury. He is defeated. No overkill there, fortunately. Uh, then he's gonna trigger the Infinity Gauntlet. So we trigger the Power Stone here. It gets this card and it says you are stunned. Cable is now stunned. Okay. Then the Creep Prime is gonna hit us for one. We draw from five down to four. And then we get dealt two phase nine counter cards with the Kree command ship, and we know what they are. Kree pride with quick strike, Kree pride with quick strike. So we take two more damage. That'll bring us from four down to two. All right. And then it is back to our turn. Okay. So this savage perimeter, I think, definitely helps us out here. Technovirus purge doesn't do anything unless we can. Um... Oh man, I could play Nick again here. Uh, I could have him just late. No, no. We need to. Telekinetic Blast, desperately. So, oh no, I want to play Nick, actually. That's probably not good, but I really want to play Nick right now. All right, so let's exhaust the Grey Malkin to generate a resource. So I can play a Stabbish Perimeter. Player decides him coming in with two times player threat. When it's defeated, each player gets a tough stat, uh, a tough stats card. We're going to attach a chance encounter to this Stabbish Perimeter, same as a four. Cable's going to Thor for two, clear off the established perimeter. So uh, we trigger the chance encounter first. Search your deck and discover an ally. Add to your hand. Let's get Nick Fury here. Add him to our hand. And then uh, when this side scheme is defeated, we uh, get a tough status card. And then it goes into the victory display. So now we have four side schemes in the victory display. Cable readies up once per phase. After he defeats the side scheme, he just throws it out. Great Malkin raises up indefinitely. We can also exhaust this good investigator so we can draw a card. Turn to body slide. Ooh, so I could cheat a hue right now if I wanted to. Uh, if I play Nick for four, draw a card, I could flip down hue, plasma rifle, and then play Telkinetic Blast here. Oof, I don't know. Is that the play, guys? That's really high tempo, but we want to do really high tempo right now. Um, you know, if I flip down, I, I would Professor to get another Thinking Majigger. Okay, let's go ahead and exhaust the Milano to generate a Wad resource. This will be three more resources here for a total of four, so I can play Nick Fury. And I'm hoping that I don't draw my other Teleconnect Blast here. 
Uh, whenever Nick Fury enters play, choose one. We're going to pick the one and draw three. Oh, man, I drew it. Okay, that's not good. Okay, so I don't want to use both of them. Uh, I have to, I think. I could also Professor. But we can always just get that size game offer next turn, which is what I want to do. What's our deck looking like? We have six cards left in our deck, so we won't be decking out here yet. Hmm. It would have been really cool if we could keep the Teleconnect Blast in our hand here. Uh, let's see. If I Grey Mountain and Plasma Rifle to remove the stun. Or do I flip down here? If I flip down, this goes up to six. Learning the scheme's hard. These guys all scheme with the new main scheme. That might be okay. Uh, yeah, I want to save a Teleconnect Blast. And I want to play the other one next turn. That's how we get the kill. So if we do that, then I don't need to body slide. I just do my regular flip. Professor will tutor us the uh, other side thing that we need for Teleconnect Blast. All right, we're going to try to line up the kill here. We have Temporal Leap if anything happens with the main scheme. So Cable is going to... Oh, do I need to heal? If I Plaza Rifle right now to remove Stun, I could Teleconite Blast, which does... How many sides? We have four, so it would do 10 damage. I could pop him right now. He gets that boost card for right now, and we have Temporal Leap. And then we could heal. Yeah, okay, yeah, let's do that. So let's go ahead and use our plasma rifle. We can exhaust it. Spend an energy resource. Great Malcolm here can generate energy resource. So it can do damage to an enemy equal to the number of side scheme in victory display. Capped at four. We have four side schemes, so it's gonna be four damage. But we are stunned, so that will just remove our stun actually. So that's gone. Then we're gonna use three resources right here so I can play a telekinetic blast. None of these minions have guards, so we can hit Ronin directly here. Here, action attack, do six damage to enemy. One additional damage to the enemy for each side scheme in the victory display. Once again, we have four here. So we're going to be doing 10 damage on Ronin. That will bring her from 12 down to 2 life. And we're also at 2 life. Okay, then I'm going to... Do I pop him here? I could pop him here. Yeah, let's go ahead and... I, I forgot I had tough too. We're going to flip down to Ultra Eagle. I think this would be cleaner. We're going to exhaust recover by 4. That brings from two back up to six. Then we're going to exhaust the professor as an alter ego action. We can choose either draw a card or search your deck in this card pile for a, a, a player side scheme. That's your hand. Let's exhaust it. Search our this card pile here for a player side scheme. And we're going to get that really strong side scheme I was telling you guys about. Keep up the pressure and we're going to add this to our hand. Keep up the pressure is zero cost to play. So let's go ahead and just put it down right here. Coming in with two threat. And hopefully we don't get like a master plan there. Um, okay. So I don't clear this turn. We're going to have Kesar swing for two on Ronin. That will bring from two down to zero. And that will flip him over to his third and final stage here. He has 25 life. 25. And then uh, he has retaliate toughness. And the retaliate will not trigger on Kesar uh, with that attack with the newest ruling. So... Uh, Kesar just takes one consequence of damage. Ronin also has a one review. Search the encounter deck and discard path for the superior tactics side scheme and reveal it. So we're going to put in superior tactics here. Uh, where is it? Right here. So another side scheme. I'm going to shuffle up the encounter deck. So superior tactics here. Comes with two times player threat. It says if Ronin has a power stone, then it's going to be one additional threat. So a total of three. And the power stone cannot be unattached from Ronin the accuser. Um, okay, I forgot. I messed something up, guys. Whenever I played my Teleconic Blast, I would have taken the Power Stone. Uh, but then when Ronan gets us out, he gets the Power Stone back. But this will only have two threat. Because we dealt more than three damage with a single attack. So we would have taken it. That's fine. This would just have two threat. Ronan still has a Power Stone. Uh, or he gets it back after we take it. Then we're going to have Nick Fury swing for two. Knock off Ronan's Tough Stats card. Nick will take a Retaliate now with his Retaliate and a Consequential Damage. All right, and we're not going to deck out here, I think, right? Yeah, we're going to hold the Teleconic Blast in our hand, and we're going to end our turn. Let's ready back up. And I think we have everything we need here. 
This is pretty crazy. I, I feel like we can actually do this. And I think it was only three turns or three rounds. Okay, so we're going to drop back up to our hand size of six and Ultra Eagle. And I'm, I'm looking for the one way or another, which I know is in the deck. There we go. So now we have a bunch of resources. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. All right. Here we go, guys. Uh, hopefully, Rowan does not get two scheme activations here. This is the first turn where I don't know what's happening in the counter deck. Okay, Rowan's turn is going to add three to the main scheme because of the acceleration here. So this goes up to six threat from three. We're in Arch Eagle, so he's going to scheme with the base of one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, plus a boost card here. Uh, seven, eight, nine. So he's scheming for nine total threat. That's going to advance the main scheme. Uh, so you get all this out. It's going to advance to stage 2A. When reviewed, if the power attached the power stone to Ronin, if it's already on, which it is, he gets a face down boost card. So this would be his face down boost card here. And then I'll actually split it. Let's put it over here. Okay. And then this would come in here with the one threat. The saturation is actually just from the formal foe, but it's here. So I remember it. Okay. He has a boost after he activates, he's going to trigger the infinity gauntlet and flip an infinity stone, put it into play. We've got the space stone here, okay, and then both all the minions will uh, activate here. So we're in scheme for one, two, three. So the main scheme will now be at four. All right, we have the temporal leap. Something really bad happens, but I don't want to use it because I need to keep up the pressure here. Uh, actually, it's fine because we have the uh, professor to get us the side scheme back out. Okay, so we get out two encounter cards now with the Cree command shield. One, two. Okay, here's the first one. Oof, okay, this is a nemesis thing. Seek and destroy in sight one. So we add a threat to the main scheme. And as peril, that means uh that means we can't cancel it, or does that mean that no, I think it means that no one can help us, but it's okay. One of you is searching counter deck discard pile and says I air for your nemesis minion and put it into play engage with you. So we get strife here who comes into play engage with us. And is that it? Yeah, that's the one review there. And then do we, does Strife do anything? He has Villainous, he does not have guards. That's actually fine. When a player plays a psionic event, cancel the effects of that event, do you want to answer Strife? Okay, so he has Villainous and um, a Force Interrupt. Oh, cancel the effects of that event. So that will hurt us. Okay, that's fine. So we've got a minion here, and then our last card, encounter card, is a Kree Commando. So another minion here with Patrol. So that means we cannot thwart the main scheme while he is in play. So right now, we do have a problem because Strife is hurting us, but I think we actually still have the kill here. Um, okay, so the space one does not trigger. Let's move Ronin's boost card, like, over here. So I have some space here because I have to kill Strife. So still all the Kree privates, they all activated. Kree, Kree commandos here. Let's clean up the area a little bit. Okay, so Strife means we cannot play psionic events. So we have to kill him first um, because he cancels all of our psionic events. Okay. And the Telekinetic Blast is a psionic event here, which is the thing with that. Um, let's see. We can easily kill him, though. Okay, what do we do right now first as Cable? Do I Professor to deck out? I think I do. So let's go ahead and you know, we want as much. Oh, I forgot. At the end of the round, if Nick Fury is in play, he will get discarded. So he's gone. All right, we are going to exhaust the Professor as an alter action. We can choose one. Let's pick the one to, um, do we need our event? The other play a side scheme? Um, you know what? Let's just get it just in case. So we're going to alter your action. We're going to pick the one to search our deck in the scout file for a, uh, a player side scheme after your hand. So let's just get generation X just in case from our discard pile back to our hand. Okay, we still have the tough here. Then we want to one way or another and kill strife. So how do we, what's the best way to do that? Let's flip over now to hero form. Whoops. Okay. Then we are not stunned anymore. Let's go ahead and use our plasma rifle, exhaust this, spend an energy resource, the gray mouth here, regenerate energy resource to do damage to an enemy equal to the number of sites in the victory's play. We have four, so four damage on strife. And that's not a psionic event. Then we're going to have uh, Kesar swing for two, defeat strife here. So he's gone. So now we don't have to worry about his thing anymore. Put that over there. Kesar takes a consequence of damage. He's going to get knocked out. All right. Then we're going to have, uh, let's see here. Got a lot of stuff. 
do I want to, yeah, we're gonna have Cable Thor for two from Keep Up the Pressure and clear off this player's size game. When this size game is defeated, you can search your deck in this card pile for an attack event at your hand. We're gonna get the Teleconnect Blast here at your hand. And then it says, uh, until the end of the phase, each attack event deals one additional damage. So all of our attack events are gonna do, so Teleconnect Blast would do one additional one. This goes into Victory Display, so we now have five side skins in that Victory Display. When a side skin is defeated, we can also exhaust the Skilled Investigator, so we can draw a card here. We drew into Astani Sun. Uh, when a side skin is defeated, Cable can also ready back up because he defeated it. We also ready the Great Malkin because the side skin was defeated. Then we decked out, so we could dealt a face down encounter card here. And let's shuffle up our player deck. Or our discard pile back into our deck, I mean. I think that was a really, really good deck cycle. We have a huge hand right now as well. Um, but I'm going to try to see how much damage I can actually get on uh, Ronin right now. I think we can do so much this turn. Okay, so let's go ahead and play a one way or another. Hero action, search the encounter deck for a side scheme, reveal that side scheme, and we can draw three cards. So we're going to look through here. Let's get whatever side scheme does not matter. Uh, Cannonade. So it has Amplify. And it has hindered three plus one, so it's gonna have four threat. We review the side scheme, let's put the threat on it, and now we can resolve the one way or another and then draw three cards. So one, two, three. All right, so we're gonna try to overkill Ronin here. Um, okay, let's go ahead. We're gonna play our Generation X here. So it's a player's side scheme. Let's put it on top of his boost card. Comes in with three threat. All right. Then we are going to, let's move all the minions here. So we have some more space to play our really cool attack events. We're going to exhaust the Grey Malkin to generate an energy resource. This will be two more resources for a total of three. So we can play our Telekinetic Blast. Here, action attack. Uh, no minion here has guards, so we hit, hit everyone directly. Do six damage to enemy, one additional damage for each side scheme in the victory display. We have five side schemes here, so it's going to do 11 damage. Keep with the pressure, makes it do an additional one, so it's going to do 12 damage on Ronan. That'll bring him from 25 down to 13. He's going to retaliate his back for one. That will knock off our tough stats card. That will, will resolve the telekinetic blast here. Then we're going to use three resources right here. So I can play a, uh, actually, wait, before we do that, I think we clear this off first. Yeah, just kidding. We're going to have Quake Thor for one to get an extra side scheme from Generation X. That will bring us from three down to two. And if Quake will take a consequent damage, she will get discarded or defeated. Cable is going to Thor now for two from Generation X and clear it off. When this side scheme is defeated, we can search our... Deck and discard file for an identity specific event adds your hand. Let's get the Teleconnect Blast here back to our hand again. And since the side scheme was defeated, it goes into Victor's Play, Great Malkin ready up again. So now we have uh, six side scheme in Victor Display, including a plus one from Keep the Pressure. So now we're going to use three resources here so I can play a Teleconnect Blast. Here, Ash and Attack, do six damage to enemy, plus one for each side scheme in Victor Display. We have how many do we have? We had six, so it's going to do 12 damage. Plus one will keep up the pressure because every attack event deals one additional damage this turn. So it's going to be 13 damage. The Auburn growing from 13 down to zero. And he's defeated, so he will not retaliate against us. But we still have three more resources right here to overkill him. And we're going to play another Teleconnect Blast again, which will also do another 13 damage, uh, bringing Rowan down even more. Um, yeah, so that was it. This is that Rowan game here. I hope you guys enjoy that gameplay. That was crazy. And yeah, I mean, Cable, in my opinion, is the strongest hero in Marvel Champions. I don't think Doctor Strange can do anything close to this. I think that this is one of the most difficult challenges in the game. Um, you know, Ronan the Accuser, the most difficult villain on Expert Mode. Expert 2, Standard 2 with the Form of Foal right over here. And we also have uh, the Infinity Gauntlet on Ronan here as well. Um, and I think that was a three-round game. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.